BioBalance HealthCast, episode 239, Characteristics of People with Blood Type B. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. We're going to be talking about blood types today, and what's important about blood types is what we want to share with you. Everybody has one. Many people do not know what theirs are, but current scientific information tells us that blood types can be used or ought to be used as biomarkers to help us learn more globally the kinds of conditions that you might have, the kinds of foods that you ought to eat, the way stress will impact you, the different mental and physical health concerns that you're more likely to to have if you fall in the global category. So we want to make the warning that these kinds of information are sort of globally useful not always specifically predictive or uh, specifically indicative that if we say you know type b's uh, manage stress better than most then blood type b then you can say well gosh i handle stress really well that may not be true for you you may have learned not to handle stress well. You may have learned through growing up in your family to eat a lot of pasta with tomato sauce. And what we're going to tell you today is that tomatoes and tomato sauce isn't good for type B's. And we're going to tell you why. So we're going to be looking at blood type B as a biomarker for exercise, diet, lifestyle, illnesses, what it, what it can tell you. Right. And so, and to me, this is a cheap way because mm-hmm. it's like a six buck test, <laughs> a cheap way of doing your genetics. And because they're on the same gene as the A, B, or O antigen, which is a protein, and antigen is a little protein that's stuck onto your red cells. So on the same gene that programs that, like the architectural plan for your body, uh, is the gene for how your cortisol works, how the enzymes for cortisol work, In other words, that's your stress hormone, Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, epinephrine or adrenaline Mm -hmm. and cortisol Cortisol. are the two hormones that are secreted when you're under stress. So how long those hormones last in your system, how fast they're broken down, how, and and in some cases, how long they, they are sustained in your system determine how you feel under stress and how you how you handle it. So there's a mechanism we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We're talking about genes that are all piled up together with this blood type marker, which is ingenious, whoever figured this out. So, um, in fact, Dr. D'Amato, D'Amato, is, is the physician who wrote all the books about blood type, and he tied in all the research together, and he did his own as well. So it's not only how we handle stress, it's, it's basically what we are, uh, what our immune system, how it works, and what we are good at. Are we good at killing bacteria or viruses, or are we good at uh, killing cancer cells? Believe it or not, here's, here's how that works. Mm-hmm. If you have a type B, which is what we're going to talk about today, is type B. Well, so, so what are the blood types? The blood types are A, O, A, B, and B. A, comma, O, o comma. A, B, B, and B. And B. So we're going to talk about type B today. Right. That's right. right. Sorry. (laughs) And um, in any case, going to immunity. Immunity has a lot to do with what what makes us sick and what kind of things we have to struggle with. So, So Bs, okay, B proteins live on viruses, okay? So let's use this as an example. So my immune system looks at a virus, and I've got B proteins on my on my red blood cell, and it says, "Oh, that looks similar to." That's to, one of us. That's one of us. I'm not going to so attack, attack it. it. Right. So bees don't handle viruses very well. So even flu virus or herpes virus or you know like cold sores. I'm not talking about you know other. I mean, there's all kinds of herpes viruses or any other kind of virus would be more difficult for a bee to kill. Mm-hmm than for an A who has the protein A on it, looks at that virus and goes, ah, not self, we're killing it, okay? Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a seek and, and destroy mission. Yeah. But A's have, and we'll talk about that at another time, but, but just in comparison, A's, the A antigen or the A protein is on a lot of cancer cells. 
So A's have a lot more cancers because they view cancer cells as self. Mm-hmm. They go, oh, so they don't fight it. They don't fight it. So they're not going to they're not going to increase their immune system to kill that cell. So it's not just about the number of T killer cells you have or the activity of them. It's really about what they're honed in on killing and they're not going to kill some some cell that looks like your own body. So they're like targeted missiles. They go through your bloodstream looking for foreigners, foreign substances that could be damaging to the body and they attack those. That's right. But if it's uh, like when it, when a a jet airplane in the Middle East is flying around. They they send out a radar signal that says uh, uh, friendly or foe. I mean, they, it's a recognition mm-hmm. pattern, so that you know not to arm up and go after them because right. they send the right signal. That's what, yeah. They they have some kind of little beeper that tells them that mm-hmm. that's them. But in our bodies, we have a protein. So so the only thing that happens with bees is we when we finally make a response to a virus, we sometimes overreact. And then we kill the virus, but then we kill some of our own cells that look like the virus. Okay. So oftentimes that means autoimmunity, like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or MS. So that's that's one of the ways immunity affects B uh, blood types. The other thing that we can we uh, that is connected to all of this is the neurotransmitters. In our brain, we have chemicals. Like, chemi- like hormones, but they're, they're neurotransmitters that communicate and bathe our brain um, in these chemicals, and they make us either happy, sad, they work between, they work between our uh, neurons. Um, they're dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Serotonin, we know, is the antidepressant hormone. Mm-hmm. Uh, norepinephrine is also an antidepressant hormone, mm-hmm. uh, but it also can be an anxiety hormone. And or neurotransmitter, and then there's dopamine, which we need for neuromuscular uh, control. If you don't have enough dopamine, you have Parkinson's and you shake, mm-hmm. kind of have a, a tremor or a tremor of your head like Katherine Hepburn. So all of these, the amounts of them, how how just like cortisol, how long they last in between the neurons, and if they're fe- they're metabolized quickly or slowly, are determined on the same gene as your blood type. So people have, like, bees don't have a big problem with neurotransmitters. In general, their neurotransmitters are pretty balanced. But some of the other blood types, like O's, have a problem with dopamine and have a problem, at, which leads to a problem with um, some, some um, like, alcoholism, some, some kind of addiction, excuse me. So, so it's important to say, though, that bees can be depressed. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not an absolute specific. Uh, but it, it has to do, what's what's important here is to learn what you can do to maximize the positive outcomes, the positive benefits, right. and minimize the negatives. For instance, what happens with bees very often when they get overstressed for too long, although they handle stress better than mm-hmm. other blood types, globally, generally. Mm-hmm. You, you may not specifically be that example, but bees generally mm-hmm. do. When they get overstressed, what happens is they they lose motivation, they lose mental focus, mm-hmm. and they just numb out. Mm-hmm. They become almost vegetative mm-hmm. until their body can restructure itself and get them up for another round. Uh, so you can have these effects, or you can learn that you are subject to these effects and try to do some behaviors uh, about the way you, you uh, meditate, mm-hmm. whether or not you do yoga, uh, whether you exercise, what kind of exercise you can do, what you eat, yeah. how you sleep, your circadian rhythms. There are things that anybody can learn without expensive investments to do to moderate their potentiality. But the reason the blood type is important, okay? Yes. So I have a friend who's an exercise ex- expert, mm-hmm. okay? And she's an O. Yes. And you try to exercise with her. And I try to exercise with her. She wants me to exercise with her. Yeah. She's killing me. I mean, because O's are full court press. They they can run forever. Their stamina is amazing. They feel great when they run. And if I do that, that's not how I exercise the best. If I do that, then I get more tired afterwards. If I hit a certain level of aerobic exercise, I end up being more tired. It uses up my stamina. So you're less likely to get a runner's high and burst into another level of performance. Right, I don't. Is more I've never gotten a runner's that. high, even though I've 
in college, I ran all the time. I mean, I yeah. ran for, for stress relief, but I never really got that high. It was just something to go do with nervous energy. Bees have to have, I'm, and I'm a bee, has to have balance. Like my perfect day is some creative, creative activity, some exercise, but not necessarily running, maybe lifting weights or yoga or hiking or walking the dog or something like that, and then having some relaxation time where I get it all together, kind of, well, kind of actually- get my brain together, and then some work. That's actually what Dr. Dadamo recommends as an exercise protocol for type Bs, that they need to do hiking, cycling, tennis, uh, mm-hmm. something that involves physical activity but also is a mental challenge or mental stimulation. Yeah, mental focus is important. You have to be thinking about something or Not doing two things at once. mindless, repetitive right. running where you, you hypnotize. But if, what away. if you're a B yeah. and your mother is an O and she says to you, you need to be... You need to be running. I guess your mother wouldn't be an O. Anyway. <laughs> if you're a your B, stepmother is an O. No, your and mother your could be your mother could be an O because she could have a B and an O and she gave and she gave you one of the O's. I mean she could be an O and an O and she gave me one of the O's and your dad gave Thank you the God B. For Gregor Mendel. So yes. Seventy five percent chance. That's of right. an O. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, she could be a no. But what if she tells you, tells me what's good for you is what's good for me, and what's good for me is running. And you have to run with me, and you have to do marathons. And I am miserable afterwards. Right. Miserable, and I don't feel good, and I haven't had my creativity, and I haven't stretched, and I haven't worked that day, and I haven't had any mental challenge. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy. So, so what I'm telling you is that this helps you figure out why... Everything your mother told you doesn't work if they're a different blood type. (laughs) I mean, you have to find out what's good for you and try it. So Mm -hmm. activity-wise, lifestyle-wise, it's very important to know that and know you're not doing something wrong when, you know, I get shamed because I don't run. You know, I don't go do this. That isn't good for me. No. And so some foods aren't good for you. That's the next step is not only is it our lifestyle, and not only is it how we live, how we like, live our life and exercise, but it's our food. Chicken parmesan would not be good for you as a mainstay of your diet. No, and I love chicken parmesan. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so the reasons being ch- chicken, high lectin, yeah, and tomato. Okay, so lectins. Okay, let me just explain right. that. Lectins are proteins that are in foods, and lectins in certain blood types kind of coagulate your food so that it either penetrates your stomach wall and you get you get these food allergies, or it gloms up and then it causes antibody reactions within the gut or bacterial overgrowth. So it's not good to eat certain foods. And they figured out, they figured this out, which is just amazing, that they can figure it out for certain types. Now, once again, we eat like our, our family. So my mom was AB, which she could eat more closely to me, but my dad was an O. Well, O's eat, can eat. They can eat meat, cheese, eggs, tomatoes, all kinds Very. of stuff. Varied, but mo- more like the paleo diet. Mm-hmm. And my mom was very had very few things that she liked, and she was more of a vegan. So basically, we all had different needs in our foods. How do you cook for that? I mean, seriously, I'm trying to think about how I'm going to cook for that because my husband's an A. How, how, how am I going to cook for him and me? He's, she should be a vegan. I should be a carnivore. <laughs> so when you, when you were a puppy in the 1950s, they just cooked for convenience. This is what right. we eat mm-hmm. in our house. And then if you had those maladaptations, not being having the wrong attitude about running or being too tired, or being cranky or whatever, mm-hmm. that was characterological. That was a failing of your character. You right. needed to muscle up. You needed to suck it up. You and we were and we were eating get things over your special self that were yeah. were were countering everything that we needed. But we learned it. It's a habit. And and now it even even now if it doesn't make me necessarily feel good, I don't even notice that. Well, an example. If it doesn't make me feel good. Nuts. Uh, uh-huh. 
almost all the diet things that you read say you ought to eat more nuts. And I tell people that all the time. But there are some nuts that these don't do as well with as others. Mm -hmm. And if they learned as children to eat those nuts, and so when somebody says nuts, you think peanuts, Mm -hmm. and you eat peanuts. Mm -hmm. Peanuts are bad for you if you're a bee. If you're a bee, you shouldn't eat peanuts if you're a bee, but you can eat almonds. It doesn't mean you're allergic to them. It means that they have lectins in them, and they are going to slow your metabolism down. So the good part about being a bee is that if you live your life in a balanced fashion, if you exercise the way you're supposed to exercise for your blood type, and if you get rid of a few things from your diet, which is tomatoes, wheat, doesn't mean we're cel- we have celiac disease. It means wheat isn't good for us, right. especially wheat germ. Right. So, and then we have peanuts and dairy. No. Dairy. Dairy's good. Uh, it says milk here on my notes, but no, milk is actually something we can actually use and I think that was my mistype. Okay. So milk is something that one of the blood types that actually can have milk. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're not lactose intolerant. That's a whole different thing. But milk is good for you. So I am lactose intolerant. So but I eat a lot of cheese and ricotta cheese and cottage cheese and but, other but you can cheeses. Take a pill to deal yeah, with for the, the lactose, lactose intolerance. It doesn't bother you too much milk. if you have curdled milk. You know, if you have you know like curdled milk mm-hmm. like if you're having cottage cheese or ricotta cheese, that the cheese culture, curds. the culture in there has taken out most Yeast of the lactose. Culture. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so it's actually cultured. So, and cheeses are usually aged. So those are really good for bees. So, so if you follow the bee diet and he has lots of other things that are beneficial for you and things that aren't, then bees should really not have a, a big weight problem. If they, if they eat wheat and a lot of carbohydrates, that's a whole different story. So, because a lot of the people that watch our podcast are people that are interested in your general practice of hormone replacement mm-hmm. and tend to be a little older, mm-hmm. menopause or, or beyond. Mm-hmm. I'd like to take a couple minutes and talk about strategies that those people can use mm-hmm. to enhance their quality of life mm-hmm. if they're a blood type B. Mm-hmm. Uh, eat right for strength and balance. And that means this. Reduce carb cravings by eating six small meals a day instead mm-hmm. of three large meals. So if you just eat a little bit and stop, you don't crave carbs, things like potatoes and mm-hmm. pastas uh, as much. Uh, when you're tired, eat some protein. Instead of eating a candy bar or even a piece of fruit, if you're type B, it's better mm-hmm. if you just eat some protein. A piece of ham. Uh, eat cheese. Piece of, yeah. <laughs> or, or nuts, whatever, yeah. beans, mm-hmm. whatever you're getting your protein from. Oh, you're not supposed to have lentils or beans if you're a bee, so hold beans. Okay. Uh, don't under eat or skip meals. You have a tendency to do that. Oh, well, mm-hmm. I'll just skip this one. That's my favorite. That's my favorite problem. <laughs> Plan ahead to have snack foods on hand for a quick energy snack. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, ch- children that have juvenile diabetes, mm-hmm. the, the, the schools, the teachers, everybody has to monitor their blood sugar and have things on hand like mm-hmm. crackers or orange juice mm-hmm. or something that can give them a surge when they start to go into a diabetic coma. Right. So you learn plan ahead and have these things for yourself. If you're a type B, you can plan ahead to have some quick... Protein's harder to carry, though. Well, it is, but you know, again, it is doable. Yeah, nuts are easy if you pick the right type. Right. Uh, obey your circadian rhythms. You know, the, the old myth about everybody needs eight hours of sleep every night, it is more true for blood type B. And that's the one thing I know I didn't do. I was 29 years. I was a gynecologist obstetrician, so I'm up all night long. Yeah. And then I'm napping during the day and working during the day and that's that's when I gained the most weight was when but, but I was are, doing there are that job strategies to adjust your circadian rhythm if you have a night job and you're a type B you can you can arrange the lighting and mm-hmm. you can take melatonin mm-hmm. there are things that if you have to be a night person you mm-hmm. can do to, to help adjust the circadian that, rhythm I wasn't either well I was I, both. I understand I was both day and night right. but if you have a night shift yeah, the melatonin is really good. Part of what we're talking about here really is how good. you can make accommodations right. if you know what your blood type is right. that can make your life a little smoother and easier. Seniors, if you're a type B, you need to, uh, the older you get, if you're type B, the less your mind can slip away, or the more, the more your mind can yeah. slip away. So the things you need to do to fight for what you have. Uh, do things like crossword puzzles or Sudoku. Mm-hmm. Uh, do mental games. Uh do math facts in your head. Mm-hmm. You know, to talk to yourself. Recite speeches that you have heard or read. You know, memorize poems. Anything that you can do to engage your mind. When you're hiking, if you can uh, recite the 
Declaration of Independence. Or, the Twelve Cranial Nerves. Yeah. I mean, you know, it depends. Right, exactly. Whatever yeah. you had to learn. Yeah, whatever, or you, whatever had to you, learn. you did. Or whatever you were interested in. Uh, do a daily regimen of stretching, yoga, and meditation. Meditation and visualization are two of the strongest tools that you can learn to use to help reduce your stress level mm -hmm. and keep your, uh, take, take little mini vacations in the mm -hmm. course of a day. I mean, they used to say the same thing in the 1960s when the Canadians figured, figured out the exercise that you can do sitting at your desk. Mm -hmm. uh, and and in your car, take a little exercise break. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm blanking on because I'm older. And well, I don't know what the Canadians did. I just know that you know we had the we had president. We had the president's physical fitness, physical that fitness was, award. Uh, that was and Bobby That Kennedy. was actually a really good idea, and yeah. no one cares really that much about physical fitness in schools anymore. They don't want to pay for it. I know, sadly. Uh, pay attention to hygiene and safe food preparation. You're more susceptible to bacterial infections than others. As you Your get sense old. of smell declines as you get old, and you don't recognize fresh as readily. So you may need to have a smeller. <laughs> honey, honey, smell this. Oh, is, it, is it okay? If I did that uh, with my dog, it would be gone. Uh, exactly. No, no, this a person like... smeller. <laughs> Your dog is, yeah, Here, that's that, good. Yeah, that's I'll good. I'll eat it. Uh, maintain your circadian rhythm. Uh, be sensitive to it. Go to sleep when you need to go to sleep. Get up. My perfect day would be schedule. going to bed at like 11, 11 but taking is what a two-hour nap yeah. bet or between 3 and 5. That would be my the you know the European schedule. Yes. That would be awesome. And then finally relax <laughs> and meditate happens. regularly. So there are strategies that can improve your quality of life, your enjoyment of life, and decrease your risk exposure to negative impacts that can happen to blood type Bs. Now, this information in Live Right for Your Blood Type, uh, in the book by Dr. Peter uh, J. Dadamo, is available for all the blood types. He breaks each one of them down and talks about the same kind of things that Kathy and I have been talking about today. So if you are interested, you can get his book and see what he has to say about your blood type. But please remember again, not to overgeneralize, not to overglobalize. You, you need to be, uh, it's like as a counselor, one of the tests that I would often ask people to take to provide information for us to work on mm -hmm. is something called the MMPI, the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. And it has been normed on nearly 100,000 people. That many people have taken it. So when you take it, it's like uh, 700 uh, true false questions. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a profile back. What I was supposed to do with that, it would highlight certain things like suicidal thoughts. And I would say to you, Kathy, if you answered the, these questions this way, tens of thousands of people have answered this question this way, and they consistently have this concern. Mm -hmm. Do you have this concern? And you would say yes or no. Mm -hmm. And then I would take that at face value. And if you mm -hmm. said no, then okay, you're an exception to the rule. So that's good. That's mm -hmm. fine. We know that. Now we can work around something else. But if it's true for you, mm -hmm. then we want to face that so that it doesn't blindside you. So they're, they're not absolute. You have to check and see, does that fit me in the way I live? And if you have, I mean, I, I don't have a lot of viral infections. I mm -hmm. mean, that I don't, I don't get the flu. I, in general, don't have a lot of those because kind of infections. you do a lot of those compensatory strategies. Right. I may not eat, even. The way that you exercise. Yeah, the, way, the way I eat or... I also take um, an immune complex, which is colostrum. It's, it's cow colostrum, chewable. And whenever I start getting sick, that helps build my immunity to a virus. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to depend on my own body to do it. It gives you IgA, which is in your lungs and your um, intestinal tract. So you can fight it. So there are ways to, if you know what your weakness is, there are ways to, to compensate for that. And that's yes. why we're talking about this. So, so you can live your life in a very healthy and productive fashion without letting diseases kind of move in on you with, and you go, Oh, I'm so surprised. Why did I get this? So if we don't, if we know, if we think we're fighting everything, if I think I'm fighting cancer, which is very low in, in bees and bacterial infections, and if I'm trying to fight it all, I don't have enough energy to fight it all. If I know what I'm fighting, that my weakness is, it's much easier for me to fight that than have to think about all of this, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what this is doing, or I want it to do for you, is to take a look at his book and then see what your weakness is by your blood type. And you can even get your blood type done. Um, you can order them on Amazon, a little blood type test. It takes a while to get because we we're trying to get one for Brett and it's been over a week, but, but we'll get it. And uh, you just 
stick your finger and do this little chemistry test and you can tell your own blood type so you don't have to go somewhere to get that and then you can see where you stand you probably would know if you think back about your history but we don't always think about that and know that your parents and your children may not be the same blood type so it, you know you're going to have to kind of examine the family meal and special you know different food for different people in the family but in any case so when i was growing up and my dad used to say we don't run a short order cafeteria here everybody eats what's put on the table he might have been wrong <laughs> well he didn't run it he's not going to run it you know he didn't really have you know the time or the or yeah. the energy to do that because he was taking care of you guys so yeah he didn't ever say eat it you'll like it he said eat it you'll live till morning <laughs> which explains a lot yeah it explains a lot uh, anyway thank you so much for listening email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com you can find the biobalance healthcast on itunes and on youtube for more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.